What's up everyone? This is going to be a special episode of the Bush Gardens Junkies. We're actually going to take you through um, what to expect, what to prepare, um, basically anything, be what to do before you get to Bush Gardens. So you're probably wondering what you need to pack with you when going to Bush Gardens. And here's uh, what I suggest. Uh, first off, a fanny pack. And then in that fanny pack, you may want to carry a mask. Some sanitizer. If you wear glasses. You want to get a strap and you want to bring your GoPro or any other kind of action camera and right there that is a chest mount and this is a wrist mount so things to do to help prepare you on your way to Bush Gardens is some things to pack and uh, this is a nice thing to have this uh, Bush Gardens fanny pack because they will allow you to have the fanny pack go on you with rides. And if you have an action camera, as long as you have a, uh, a three point harness or some kind of like chest mount like that or a wrist mount where you can actually mount the GoPro or action camera into the mount. Um, you are allowed to bring the cameras on the ride with you and folks uh just to be uh honest with you i don't recommend putting your phone or taking your phone with you on the rides i don't recommend even putting them in the fanny packs uh reason being uh if you do not have a screen protector some of the rides, like Iron Gwazi, is very brutal. It will damage the screen protector and possibly the screen. So, if you have a phone that's already got a screen that's cracked, well, it may even get even worse. So, trust me, um, there is a pouch on Iron Gwazi where you can put your phone in front between your legs in front of the seat uh, but highly recommended to go ahead and keep it with an off rider or a non rider uh, or rent a locker I think it's like ten dollars for the day and you it follows you wherever you go so put the stuff in a locker there are lockers in front of every single ride um, especially your cell phone. Okay, so if you are wondering, um, Bush Gardens does allow you to bring water in, and they also let you bring your own scooter in. So we have uh, plugged this in and charged up the battery, and we're going to bring our own scooter. They do have scooters there to rent, but I think currently the scooters are like $80, $85. Um, so if you have your own that you can bring with you, uh, bring your own electric mobility type scooter. Now they do allow you to bring coolers, a soft cooler. And one thing that I would suggest before the night before is putting some water bottles in the freezer and putting some water bottles in the fridge. So that way you have basically an ice pack in there to keep your bottles of water nice and cold 
for the rest of the day. All right, so it is the morning of our trip and um, it's gonna take us an hour to get there. So we are leaving, so we're at the gate 30 minutes before the park opens. The park opens at 10 o'clock and we wanna get there at rope drop. So we have our bag here. We put in our frozen bottles of water along with some refrigerated bottles of water and the frozen bottles will keep that cold like an ice pack also if you have a refillable or souvenir cup don't forget to bring that with you also refillable popcorn uh, there is a barcode somewhere or maybe not uh -oh. who knows um, towels because today is going to be a hot day we're going to get wet so bring towels to dry yourself off and that's about it so you're coming into Bush Gardens I was going to stand in front of that sign to do an intro but uh, yeah, there was no place to pull off to the side of the road. Now, depending on if you're coming from the north or south, you'll be all coming in right here. Now it is currently 926, which, well, I already see cars going in and, and buses is awesome. going in. So that might mean that parking is open. So, uh, looks like we gotta move over a little bit. As they are, looks like they're doing some work with you know, electrical or trees, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they come up here to the parking toll and it is practically empty. Now, for standard parking, you do see that, $30. But we are Silver Pass members. And for Silver Pass members, we get free parking. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Doing well. May you see a matching ID as well? Yep. Thank you very much. Here's Thank you. This. You guys have a wonderful day. You too. We are going to follow the blue line. To go into the handicap parking. Or disabled parking as they like to call it. And uh, well there is the two buses that we saw. So far coming in. And uh, here is general parking. And up here, up here, you will be directed to park in either general parking or continue on to handicap parking. tram goes through on the right hand side and we go underneath McKinley I think this is McKinley on the left hand side now up 
up here, there's also preferred parking and disabled parking. Preferred parking looks like it's getting packed up. So there might be something special going on today. Um, but let's go ahead and check out what disabled parking looks like. Now when you're coming through here, you gotta be very careful because people walk and cross through here. And, uh, so, the reason why we wanted to get here at 9.30, usually the parking tolls open up 30 minutes before the park opens up. Today, today the park is supposed to open up at 10. And uh, there we go, to handicapped parking or disabled parking. And we found a nice little spot here and parked our happy little car. Now, if you came in off the tram, you would be coming in uh, from general parking and you would come walking by. You can pose for a photograph in front of the lion. And uh, you got the ticketing booth and then you got the line for security. We're gonna go ahead and go right up to the security line and wait in line until the gates open up. Now, that is a term you'll hear me calling rope drop. Rope drop is when they actually open up the gates. We stopped there at the Adventure Outpost, which is also guest relations, where is the place where you go to get your rap sheet, and uh, that's for the ride accessibility program. I'll give you a link down below in the comment section about uh, the ride accessibility program at Bush Gardens. It is basically a program where you don't have to wait in line if you have any kind of disabilities, but it still allows you to get on the ride. They just give you a return time to come back and ride the ride. Um, also at Guest Relations or the Adventure Outpost, you can get uh, the All Day Dining Pass, your Bush Buck, anything you need to get. And then it leads you into basically the marketplace where you can buy souvenirs, hats, mugs, stuffed animals, shirts, and all the like. Where my wife likes to always go. Like there she is right now. She likes window shopping or, or patio shopping as this is. And I do have scooter rentals here, wheelchair rentals and all the like. Uh, but I definitely recommend if you have your own to bring your own with you. I'm not sure how the rest of this video is going to go. I'm going to be taking bits and pieces from here and there. So um, after you uh, go to guest relations and pick up your all day dining or whatever else you need to do, uh, there's a cafe right here and there's a couple of different directions you can go. You can either go left or you can go right. If you go right, you'll pass some more uh, places like Sultan Sweets where you can get a nice cup of coffee and a, a nice muffin or a cinnamon, cinnamon roll or something uh, for breakfast. Um, I prefer going to the left because you really wanna get a spot in line over here first before anything else. And uh, I think I spotted Tayton. Tayton is very famous around here too. Tayton has been riding uh, Aranguazi since October. Since October. And uh, he's been on it over 200 times. 203 now. 203 times. Not no Kalen though. So not no Kalen. Kalen's probably up to about five or 600. 500 today. 500 today. So. But yeah, um, uh, I, I'm going to ask Peyton, Peyton, when you come into the park, uh, do you want to go left or right? Left. Is that even a question now? Yeah, is that even a question? See, 
Uh, so all you YouTubers here, the first thing you want to do is get in line for Iron Gwazi because it is going to get very long very quickly. Uh, right now it's up to about 40 minute wait. Um, we got another time for uh, uh, 1045 I think so we're about ready to head on it again. Uh, second time today. So like I said, you got to get here bright and early at rope drop. And uh, Either that or come around one. Or come around one when it dies down. Yeah. And here we go. One of the things to check out after each ride is the ride photo. And after each ride, they usually have a spot where you can check out your ride photos. And uh, for Iron Gwazi, we also have an Iron Gwazi gift shop. Bush Gardens has a little bit of everything for everyone. If you like roller coasters, well, place for roller coasters. If you like animals, well, Bush Gardens is also part zoo. And if you have little ones, well, they have a spot for your little ones too. It's called Sesame Street Place. Uh, Safari of Fun. And uh, yeah, it is sponsored by Sesame Street. So you'll see uh, possibly Elmo and um, uh, I don't know about Big Bird, maybe uh, Abby. Um, trying to think of all I don't watch Sesame Street I, I don't watch Sesame Street so I don't know all the new characters uh, that they have on it today but yeah um, if you are thinking about visiting with kids well here it is now they got rides for the little kitties they even got a roller coaster in there for the little kitties. Uh, face painting. And uh, a little area just specifically designed for the kitties. Plus also a little gift shop if you want to get, uh, you know, some Sesame Street merch. Just on the other side. Now, if you notice, it is kind of fenced in so that way the kitties stay in and the adults stay out except for the parents and you got a tree house you can climb ride you can ride and all designed for the little ones. Continuing on around the park. Yeah, we do have birdies, but unfortunately they are still closed because of the bird flu. So, yeah, we still gotta wait around, but we can still see them from right here. Lots of birdies, and they're being taken care of.
they really miss uh, the people. But in order to keep them safe, they need to be uh, kind of like quarantined from the rest of us. And uh, like I said, Fish Gardens is just one big huge circle that we go around. Nice little mix of roller coasters and animals. So here at Bush Gardens there's many forms of transportation, one of them being the train. And we are here at the Stanleyville train station. They now currently have three train stations open, one in Congo, one here in Stanleyville, and one in, um, I forget which the other one was. Uh, it's by the edge of Africa, I think it's the, um, yeah, not sure. Uh, but yeah, there's three train stations. Now, we're gonna move through this little spot real quick. There is a train coming down. But yeah, right here is a guaranteed splash zone. So, Like I said, this is a guaranteed splash zone, and here comes the train that's gonna splash people. So again, if you guys are hot and you need to get a little wet, ooh, and even standing over here, you get a little mist of it. The mist is good too. Get wet at Cheeker Splash Zone. Now this is uh, coming into Stanleyville. Uh, we're actually in Stanleyville at the moment. Uh, you got the train station back there. We got the smokehouse. And up here we have the log flume. Some games. And Sheikra. No. We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a ride on Chikra. The wait shouldn't be too long. Thank you. This is the uh, the rig that they're talking about that they need to bring over there for Falcon Fury to fix it. Uh, yeah, Falcon Fury is still down. I haven't seen it ride so far. And uh, yeah, they haven't had any wait times on it yet. Ooh, it got a little wet there. But yeah, this log flume, they had shut down for a while so they can repaint the rails and the outside. All brown. And then at the bottom, where all the water stands, they painted it all blue. Nice day, hopefully we can get a little wet. Thank you. That was Charlie up there. A good shout out to Charlie. And uh, here comes the wetness. <laughs> we got wetness. Charlie's been following me and watching my videos. And, uh, yeah, good guy.
good guy all around. He's uh, good friends with Tate, and we all know about Tate. Please sit upright, hold on tight, and brace for a sudden. Here we go. The See the over door. there, Tigress. Por favor. Which was put in place of uh, the, uh, the tidal wave. Thank you, F2. And here we go. Nope. I didn't get too wet. So what? Because you weren't in the back. Ah. I need to be put in the back to get wet wet. Yep. But eh, you notice they put a nice new paint job in here too, make it all nice and blue. My arms got wet. But yeah, it's not a guaranteed wetness like the Sheikr Splash on. Now, this is Tigris. This is actually what they used to have water traveling through and the boats going through here. And uh, yeah, at one point there was a bridge that went across so when the boat came down off the little hill Everybody on the bridge would get wet. And that bridge, I believe, was somewhere right up here. It went across here, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. Could be up a little further. But yeah, it was in this general area where they had that little bridge. It was a cool little bridge. But yeah, they've now replaced it with Tigris. <laughs> Along with the train and walking, there is another form of transportation called the Sky Ride. But uh, of course, uh, currently, the Sky Ride is not open. It will be opening up this summer of 2022. So. Uh, that would be a alternative form of transportation. This will take you over from Stanleyville all the way to uh, the uh, Egypt area where Cheetah Hunt is. It'll actually take you into the same building that Cheetah Hunt is in where you load up for Cheetah Hunt. Now, I did say earlier that uh, we prefer to go left and uh, not right. But if you do go right, you get to see cheetahs, alligators, gorillas, um, I think chimpanzees, and uh, there's also Montu, Cobra's Curse, and Cheetah Hunt. And when you go around there, you also go around the outside of, uh, actually they call it the edge of Africa, where you can also see uh, porcupines, and uh, hippos, giraffes, and uh, rhinos, and uh, you can also see that if you take the train ride, the train ride will also take you around the Serengeti Plain. And uh, we're currently right here in Stanleyville, getting ready to leave Stanleyville to go into Pantopia. Now up there in Pan, uh, actually not Pantopia, well, Jangala and then Pantopia. In Jangala, they have the orangutans, the gibbons, they got uh, Chick-fil-A, and they also have a ride called Wild Surge, which is more of a an easier kiddie ride where it just goes up and down, uh, pneumatic, but you do get some airtime on it. Uh, and then heading out from there, you also have the Congo River Rapids, which is more in that general direction. Unfortunately, this shortcut path is kind of closed. They only open that up for Hollow Scream and during Christmas Town. They have, as you can see there, they still have the bars up there where you walk through it and those bars are covered with all kinds of lights and they play music and the lights 
sparkle to the music Christmas music but uh, over there you do have Kumba you have the your Banga Banga bumper cars you have some more games that you can play and um, all kinds of goodies uh, Kumba is out there too uh, Kumba the Congo River Rapids uh, I'll go ahead and show you that shortly this is Jangala where oh, the treetop trails are closed which means the gibbons are closed and wild surge is closed but here you have chick-fil-a tiger treasures the tiger viewing area and over there the orangutan viewing area now if the congo river rapids was open they would have this path over here opened up but chances are this path will be closed yep yeah the congo river rapids is closed for today you got the tiger trails right there which it features a tiger pop-up which means you come in out from underneath the ground in a glass environment and you can actually get up close to the tigers uh, you got the ubanga banga bumper cars and uh like i said uh bumper cars. the beyond the bumper cars we also have another train station that they recently reopened the Congo train station and along with that beyond there you also you can probably hear it Kumba and I believe from what I read and what I heard Kumba in Swahili means roar I go down a little ramp into Pantopia and we're gonna go ahead and eat in Pantopia at the Dragonfire Grill and uh, also here in Pantopia there is the uh, Pantopia theater which used to be the dolphin show but uh, yeah, currently now it is, uh, there's no shows. But when they start bringing shows back, they'll have some shows in the Pantopia Theater. And this is more of a, like a, a bazaar where they have a whole bunch of games that you can play. Um, a, a Ferris wheel, I mean, not a Ferris wheel, a carousel. There is a well, right there, there is a ship that goes back and forth. It was called Phoenix, but the Phoenix flew too close to the sun and she got burnt out. Over there is Sand Serpent, which is basically a mouse ride. Anheuser Busch Eagle. You got the twisted pretzels here. Like I said, they got many games here you can play. get your chances at winning they got some kitty rides over there we're gonna go through the steam and yes they got this steam going today Ooh, that feels so good it feels so cold uh, on a hot day like today it's needed oh and it drips on you so yeah they got the crane over here so they can work on Falcon's Fury uh, right over here next to scorpion we have the dragonfire grill which has all kinds of different goodies to eat the dragonfire grill has a nice little atmosphere sometimes they have music playing but the choices of food is phenomenal you have asian food burgers they even have an impossible burger chicken and pizzas Now, one thing uh, as we're going through Pantopia that I noticed, there's water dummies on the Phoenix. 
you also have uh, the bush flyers here. Twisted pretzels. Now, uh, there's one good thing that they did have that they need to bring back. It's called the Pretzel Fury. Right next to Falcon's Fury. Basically, it's a, a bacon wrapped in a pretzel. You also have the painted, painted Camel Bazaar for some more goodies. And over there is the entrance to Falcon's Fury, the Dragonfire Grill. And uh, again, more spots where you can get your face painted. Or if you wanted a caricature, caricature you can get a caricature done. And uh, as we leave Pantopia, we're going to come up to another misty area. They're going to hope that the mist will cover the smell of the elephants. But yeah, just beyond this area is the elephants. And when the wind's just right, you can smell them. And boy, do they stink. And sometimes they stink, but they're animals, so what do you expect? Animals smell. Whee! Uh, and just outside they have the Animal Care Center. The Animal Care Center is where they do perform procedures uh, like uh, doing tests. And uh, right now it's for the uh, ACE check-in. Right over here, we have some of the elephants. But yeah, if they need to do any procedures, they usually bring them here to the animal care center where they can uh, perform uh, their procedures, uh, blood work and whatever else they need to do to keep the animals healthy. Uh, they, these work balls have been here for quite some time. And uh, beyond that is what they call Project Jethro that we have not had any updates for for the past couple of years. Just behind that is Cheetah Hunt. The roller coaster goes right through there and takes up portion of the old Rhino Rally. And up here is the Serengeti Outpost. Now, along with the roller coasters here at Bush Gardens and the animals, you can also get tours and uh, special behind the scenes uh, meetups with the animals. They usually pick the best of the best animals. They're animal ambassadors. And uh, you can get a whole bunch of insider tours here at the Serengeti Adventure Outpost. And right there we have a tour getting ready to go. And here we have the train station. Now behind the train station, right here, you can go down here and uh, go on the edge of Africa and you will have fun meeting up close with uh, uh, some lions and some hyenas and giraffes hippos and uh, yeah don't we don't see any of the tortoises here but here's a good spot where you can see the tortoises but they are hiding from us Uh, no, there they are. They're in the shade. Oh, 
we have two tortoises here, Bubba and Jim. And uh, right now they're not very active. Well, I, I wouldn't be too active when I'm over 100 years old either, so. Uh, yeah, I think uh, one of them's 80 or getting close to 100 and the other one's about 100. So, there they are. And we also have right here, Well, the train looks like the train just left. So it's gonna be a while before we get the next train. And in here, they have animal connections. Lizards, snakes, sloths, birds, you name it. They probably have it here. Right next to the area, we also have the penguins. That's how they say Susie and Freddie and Georgie and Petey. It is. That's how they tell who's really? who. Yeah. yeah. That's how they tell who's who. So this must be related to you because we got a little green, but got a little blue band. So this one related to you? Huh? You think? Don't know? No, he That's doesn't true. know. I don't know. <laughs> Now, if we went right in the morning, we would have came down this way here, passed by the Miami Reserve where we can see the gorillas and chimpanzees. There's also gators back there, and right up there is the um, Moroccan theater where they have turn it up it's an ice skating show now as you come up this way you still get more animals of the steel kind and of the furry kind it looks like uh, Looks like they might be getting ready for a cheetah run. Yeah, it is a cheetah run at two o'clock. Nice little area here by cheetah hunt. We also have the Serengeti Outlook that has Oasis Pizza and the giraffe bar. Giraffe bar is so cool, you can look over the Serengeti. Now, over here, of course, Cheetah Hunt took its spot, but we used to have the Clydesdales here, if you remember. And uh, this area used to be like an Egyptian themed area. And we got Cobra's Curse and Montu and some more games we're here at the exit of Montu and uh, well it is a inverted roller coaster which means you dangle from the track you don't sit on top of the track like most roller coasters but yeah this one is really good because you get to dangle your feet and uh, we'll watch this one when it comes through which should be very shortly with Montu, it is an inverted B&M. And uh, you sit down in the chair and the floor lowers and you get to go. Dangling, hanging from the track. Now right here, we have some of the best rides. Cobra's Curse is what they consider a family roller coaster. So, if you have a family, it's a good one to ride. And we got a 15 minute wait, so we're gonna go ahead and get on there again. <laughs> now, Cobra's Curse is a different type of ride. 
you sit on the track and when you sit on the track you sit in what they call like a mine car <laughs> they didn't put a time on there it was 15 minutes so oh cool all right so we're gonna get the spinny spinny one again and uh this time i got my gopro so eli you better hold on to that real good. i'm not i'm not gonna carry it on me with the ride but if you see here they got the wheel track the trains actually ride on it and each each car has its own individual spin over here at the Nairobi train station we get a nice little view of a cheetah hunt along with I believe these are Thompson gazelles that are here right in front of us so we get a nice little view of some gazelles as the train is coming in And this is, of course, one of the means of transportation through Bush Gardens. They have recently opened up the Congo train station. This is the Nairobi train station. And there's also the Stanleyville train station. We're going to be going to the Stanleyville train station. Take a giraffe, actually one of the small of the giraffe species. But still here, I'm not sure if I'll tell you. It stands to 18 feet tall and weigh about one ton. Draft is one of the few animals to actually see in color. About a 360 degree field of vision. Which means giraffe is a result or an around long neck, seven vertebrae. Same number of vertebrae as you and I. Some of you may have been able to spot some zebra way out there. This area is the Grebby. Grebby is the largest of our true zebra species. Now yeah, when you get on the Serengeti Express train, you're right here on the Serengeti Plain. So yeah, wild animals can come right up to the train and meet with you. Uh, we got the uh, giraffes and impalas over there. Over here we have Jody, the rhino. This has been one of those days where a lot of animals been seeking shade. I'm not sure if we're gonna see Jody, but she's somewhere in there. Now just beyond that hill I saw a crash. And that is what we call a bunch of rhinos. Called a crash. A crash of rhinos. But they're way over there. Way out in the distance. Now what's the left hand side of the tank? On the other side of the roadway. There are three trees out there. Under those trees, there are going to be some zebra and some wildebeest. The zebra under the tree is a grant of the most photographed of all zebra species. Small of our two zebra species. Grand zebra have beautiful stripes all the way around and under their belly. The other animal also near those three trees is a wildebeest. Wildebeest also known as bearded new. Along with the zebra, they make up one of the largest herd of animals out on the Serengeti, about a million plus. When they're on the move, they create a dust cloud. Dust clouds so large to be seen from the International Space Station with the naked eye. Now, if you want to look way over to the left, the farthest to the left, there are some animals up to a tree out there. They're shaggy brown, hard to tell from here. Those are water buck. They're not aquatic, even though the name might have quiet. They do have a very oily coat that helps to shed water if they do happen to get caught in the rain or end up in water somehow. Join an all male herd. Also on the right hand side, coming up alongside the train, the small tan animal. 
for the black racing stripe on the side is a green gazelle. When we're sitting in the station, you may have noticed some gazelles on the left-hand side. Those were Thompson gazelles. These green gazelles are a little larger and a little faster. Gazelles can run maybe 25, 35, 45 miles per hour. They'll threaten to kick it up to about 55 miles per hour. And again, over on the right-hand side, some more of our Grand Zebra. A lot of young zebra born here at Pushcott. When a young zebra is first born, they're actually red and brown in color. As the zebra ages, those stripes get darker and darker until they become a very dark chocolate more brown. Grand zebras. Basically, the older the zebra, the darker the stripes. Now, before we run the tunnel, on the left-hand side, behind the fence, you may catch a glimpse of a greater kudu. That's a forest antelope, considered to be one of the most handsome of the antelope species. Left-hand side, they like it back there because they are a forest antelope, very shy, timid animal. And way back there you see the ostriches. And here, yeah, just behind the fence. It's very shy. There's two of them back there. And there they go. The green train, that's the train that'll be on all night long. They'll be on until 8 o'clock this evening. Whereas this train should be leaving the track shortly. My train actually leaves from the Stanley Station at 8 o'clock this evening. Uh, here we go have ahead. A Once you get over the roadway, it is Congo. Congo is where you find the Banga Banga Bumper Cars, Kumba, Short Walk to Changala, and Bandoka. Right Congo there. River Rapids is closed today. Now, if you're planning on leaving us here in Congo, the exit will be to the station side platform. There'll actually be exits that are either up towards the engine or back towards the rear of the train. And as always, it's important that you remain seated. When it is safe to stand and exit, we'll gladly let you know. If you are going to exit, watch your step. It's a long way down, a little longer than you think. You can make sure you watch your step if you do decide to exit the train. So if you watch many of my other videos, whenever it's hot, this is the best place to be when it's hot. We gotta wait a little while, the train's still coming. Now we need the front side. Here at the Food and Wine Festival, they have a lot of these uh, murals that are all set up all over the place. Beautiful, beautiful colors and everything. And uh, this one was done by a Carlos Colbertson, also known as the Zulu Painter. There's many other things around here. But yeah, this is the Food and Wine Festival. The uh, the quasi quasi field back there, and uh, yeah, we got some great eats here. Try out different foods, seasonally inspired, in Southern Kitchen. Here's another mural. I like that one. Here's another one from Zulu Painter. And this one looks like it's specifically of Iron Gwazi. That one's cool. Yeah. And 
speaking of Iron Gwazi, that's where we're headed. If you're wondering about my top favorite rides, well, right here, Iron Gwazi. That is currently my number one, my wife's number one, and a lot of other people's number one ride. Now, if you're faint of heart, I would not try to ride this, but if you love roller coasters and love ejection time, you'll see all those people heading out. They're all enjoying it. Yeah. They go up the hill there. And once they hit the top of the hill on their way down, it's non-stop action. So, if you come to Busch Gardens and you're a roller coaster enthusiast, I would definitely suggest you come here to Iron Gwazi and give it a ride. A little bit about this ride. Uh, it was delayed for two years because of COVID. It is a hybrid coaster, which means it has a wooden structure and a steel track. It goes up 206 feet. The first drop is 91 degrees and you have three inversions. Yes, three inversions. The uh, other roller coasters, uh, they're Shikra and Montu and Cheetah Hunt. Those all tie for second place. Cobra's Curse is uh, a good third. And well, the rest of the rides are all fourth. But yeah, if you definitely want to come and have some fun, Iron Gwazi is a fun one. Uh, Cobra's Curse is more of a family coaster. Sheena Hunt, I think, is considered more of a family coaster. It does have one inversion, but it is uh, pretty much uh, nice and easy. It's not that rough, but if you want a true family coaster, that would be the Cobra's Curse, which has no inversions. It just spins. And uh, the train that we got on today really spun real good. So the mechanics really greased up the wheels on that one. So that is, uh, that is my favorite rides here. A must, a must do. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast, again, a must do. Iron Gwazi. Shikra, Cobra's Curse, Montu, Kumba, Cheetah Hunt. Uh, I think I said Shikra already. Uh, they're, they're all good. They're all good here. Now, Kumba that has been here for a while and it is getting a little old. It will rattle you around a little bit and possibly give you a headache. A little trick on that is when you go through some of the uh, raw, uh, some of the elements on Kumba hold your head forward so it doesn't bang up against the uh, harness and you won't have a headache now with Iron Gwazi there is no advice to give you you just strap in and hold tight or if you're like me you don't hold that tight you just put your arms up and wave them in the air like you just don't care Five hundred! Five hundred! Woo! Hey. <laughs> well folks, I sure hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough that we did today. Um, hopefully we got covered uh, everything that you need to know when you come to Bush Gardens. Um, if there is anything that I left out, uh, I'll try to catch it in part two. If I have a part two. Well, we'll see. There may be a part two. Because I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. But, uh, yeah. To enjoy your day at Bush Gardens, just follow those simple little steps and uh, prepare for a fun time. Uh, hopefully more rides will probably open up. 
like the Congo River Rapids and uh, other rides like that. Uh, Falcon Fury was also closed today. Um, and uh, for the most part, everything else was running and had a good old time. I want to give a good shout out to all 166 subscribers out there. Doing a great job. You know, my son didn't think I can hit 200 by the end of the year, but guess what? We'll prove them wrong. It's in probably a couple of months if you guys keep on doing what you're doing. So thank you all 166 of you and all of you that love watching. Stay tuned for more content. One thing I... Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when you're coming here, what you want to do is check on the ride heights and also check on the ride maintenance schedule, ride closures. At the entrance right over there, you see all the different rides with the ride heights. So when you come into the park, you can go ahead and check and see if you're tall enough to ride the rides over there. And then you go in through security and you have a great old time. So, but make sure you check the kiddies' heights on those rides. 